Thanks for staying with us. It's time now to look at what's trending, making headlines that is on Nigerian newspapers this morning. Theophilus and I have got a, a host of them before us. Let's check out First News now. The biggest story is captioned, no going back on strike. That's according to Labour. Says uh, we have no agreement with federal government to suspend action as uh, NEC. We brought up that report earlier on the show. NEC is begging NLC and TUC not to cripple the economy. Of course, there are more riders, uh, one of which is that the Justice Minister Latif Fagwimi has written to the labor unions saying a planned action is a gross breach of court order. In the meantime, a CSO is set to have vowed to thwart Labour's planned indefinite strike. There's an interesting, uh, you know, splash of pictures also on the first uh, news. And it's, uh, there's the headline or the description there, which says an alleged high-handedness. Civil servants in the Federal Ministry of Works in Abuja blocking access into the ministry to protest against what they call uh, high-handedness by the Supervising Minister of Works, Senator Dave Umahi, on Thursday. There's also an interesting story there down below the pictures of the happenings at the Federal Ministry of Works, and that is the Deputy Governor of Edo State and his principal, uh, Governor Obaseki. Obaseki is telling his deputy, I have ac accepted your apology and says, your unwarranted provocation cost me severe personal discomfort. Let's quickly check out the Daily Times now. It's still on the pending NLC strike. An official is quoted as um, giving some conditions as to a possibility of labor calling off the proposed indefinite strike. But NLC scoffs at President's planned October the 1st speech if it doesn't address issues while Nupeng Bank workers in massive mobilization, NEC says give Tinobu more time. All right, that's on Daily Times. On Nigerian News Direct, October 3 strike action pressure mounts as NEC reps and others beg labor to shelve plans. Nigeria cannot withstand another mass action. This is according to uh, members of the House of Representatives. Up there on the Nigerian News Direct, Tribunal affirms Governor Obasani's election, dismisses Ashiru's petition. And there's a report, FGA marks 75 billion naira for financing of 100,000 startups and MSMEs. To the nation now. The nation says, government to TUC and NLC respect court order barring strike. AGF rights unions, uh, Falano, the DSS, IG, and the NSA. Labor, on the other hand, is saying it's judicial terrorism and a breach of our rights. All right, there, uh, Obaseki says, I forgive Shuaibu's aberrant behavior that's up there on the nation. And uh, there is a report down on the nation as to how Southeast can overcome insecurity by governors and leaders. On the punch now, it's still on the labor, Labour's indefinite strike. The punch goes on to say that the TUC is insisting that threats will not deter them. We are no cowards. Governors ask NLC to shelf strike. AGF says strike will be contempt of court. And um, Ogo, I'm looking at stories uh, below the front page of the punch. Ogo, APC, PDP confident. As tribunal rules on Saturday, that should be interesting to watch out for. A show accident there is sad one as five Lautech students and drivers and driver burnt to death. Leadership says NAS budget, that's the National Assembly budget, has been stagnant for 13 years. That's according to the speaker. Uh, six uh, killed in fresh southern Kaduna attack. 100 die, 150 injured in Iraqi wedding in Feno. Uh, and finally with me is the Daily Trust. Daily Trust is leading with um, the big story there. Kaduna Tribunal upholds Ubasani's election on technical ground, says election inconclusive, orders rerun in four local government areas after considering, considering merit, will appeal 
This from the PDP candidate and Governor Sani, uh, a victorious one, is saying that the judgment affirms mandate given to me. Quickly now, Theophilus. So we move to this Nigeria newspaper. And it says, NAF strikes, villages abandoned Anambra Imo communities. IPOB, ESN denied destruction of camps. Suspected gunmen flee hideouts, sources say. Uh, suspend your plan strike, and NEC tells Labour as NLC insists on action. Controversy trails the tribunal judgments on Kaduna governorship election. These are the stories and more in this Nigeria. We move to salient news. It says, within four months, Tinubu borrows over 1.5 trillion naira from World Bank. That's according to the Debt Management Office. The loans are for education, $700 million. Par, $750 million. Women Empowerment, $500 million. That's the rider here. Moving on, Adebutu versus Abiodun. Ogun Tribunal delivers judgment Saturday as APC says, no cause for alarm. That's in salient times this morning. Business Day says fight, uh, flight to dollars heightens as inflation dwarfs returns. That's uh, in Business Day this morning. Other stories here says uh, Shell funded solar factory targets Chinese imports. Uh, rise vest silence over Chaka buyout fee raises question. That's in Business Day this morning. And finally with me, Nature News, the Environment First, says green in Nigeria. State government adopts ambitious tree planting initiatives to tackle climate change. Experts advocate for trees with economic value to communities. Green technology, solution to gas flaring in Nigeria. That's according to Professor Idris. Samoolu orders clean up along Lagos Red Line Corridor. That's uh, one story as well. And finally, 75% of farm produce exports come from Jigawa. That's according to the NSC. That's in the Nature News this morning. Kemi. All right. Uh, of course, uh, the labor strike looms. It's said to be an indefinite one, uh, Theophilus, when, if and when it commences on Tuesday next week, October the 3rd. I, I say if because uh, when you look at, you know, the precedent so mm -hmm, far, mm -hmm. uh, Labour has not been silent exactly mm -hmm. on the issue of um, hardship on Nigerians and its move, its stance. But it, it remains to be seen, <coughs> excuse me, it remains to be seen how, uh, what will happen between now and, and, and October the 3rd. Of course, between now and then, uh, Nigerians will also be looking forward to the President's Independence Day speech. Definitely. On definitely. Sunday, which uh, many reckon will address uh, these unresolved issues amidst talks with, uh, between the federal government and Labour. Of course, Labour, on the other hand, is saying there's really not been much forthcoming from the presidency in terms of the deliverables, mm -hmm. the, the palliatives in terms of, you know, the welfare of the Nigerian worker or the average Nigerian. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's so much pressure on labor now. There's also the issue of um, is labor in contempt of court? Because there yeah. is a court order, court order um, yes. um, way before the ministers were sworn in. Mm -hmm. But until the court order is, is lifted, or vacated, so to speak, it, it still stands. And that is the position of the Attorney General of the So the court order still stands. Right. So it means that if the court order still stands, then <laughs> labor might be in contempt, or contempt of court. Well, you are the legal person here, so you should but, know. But, but, but and we, are, we are all, uh, you, know, you know, under the, the rule of the law. Mm -hmm. The rule of the law is, is supreme. And, uh, well, this, this is... A, a twist, but of course, labor is being backed by Femi Falano. How much Falano. of a twist is this? <laughs> labor is being backed by Femi Falano, mm -hmm. a, a learned, very learned, um, you know, lawyer on on the matter. And um, we don't know how far this will go because, in the words of labor, they are calling it judicial terrorism. That it is <laughs> well within their rights to go on strike and. Um, we wait to see how it will all pan out. Mm. But, you know, amidst the talks, you know, the government has made a case. We saw the state governors, you know, in the report today uh, when the, uh, the the NEC body met. We yes. saw, you know, the pleas, uh, you know, from their own end because they also are stakeholders on the matter. Sure, uh, sure. Looking at, you know, the interventions from state government so far, the distribution 
of palliatives, which is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. It's a work in progress. And the issue of there was a talk uh, then of a national or a state-owned welfare register, you know, that will... Cater for more people. You know, cater for more people as against the federal government's mm -hmm. um, run register, uh, social wel welfare register at the time, which they said did not reflect the the true realities of right. states. And so they intervened by, you know, insisting that let them come up with their own, um, you know, register of, of residents so that that will determine how uh, palliatives uh, will be shared. So for government, it is a work in, it is work in progress and let the negotiations, let the channels of communication not be broken. I, I believe that the gov federal government between now and, and Tuesday should meet labor and they should come up with an amicable solution to all of this because the truth is, um, while labor has the right to go on strike, I, I, I do not think strike might be the answer to our problems. If we have, like you said, channels of communication has to be open. And so if we have such situations, we shouldn't, we shouldn't expect that everything will go on fine. And by possibly midnight on Monday, we should hear something different that uh, the strikes have been called off. All right, uh, Theophilus is hopeful there. I, am, I will keep my fingers crossed. <laughs> I am, actually. Uh, I, I will keep I my am. fingers crossed because, you know, there, there seems to be so much um, controversy uh, on, on the matter. Mm -hmm. Because when you weigh in on the role that labor has or the role labor should have, you know, on the welfare of Nigerians, and, you know, one w could also argue that it's well within their rights. Definitely. Uh, the realities on the ground, you know, speaks of hardship, mm -hmm. you know, across, you know, many divides. The rich are feeling it. Uh, everyone the poor, is especially feeling it. Everyone. The, the market women, the, the customers, every, everyone is feeling it. How much you buy a product today is not how much you meet it the next day. But, you know, these are realities, again, that the president and his team met on ground. Mm -hmm. You would call them inherited woes. And he has said, "Do not envy me. Uh, where we yeah, have it, job. we have it. You mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, we have it under under control. And uh, you know, just give us some time because some of these things may not exactly bring about short term measures. We, if the analysts have said these are long term measures before True. we can now begin to see a much better, you know, economic reality. It 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 might take, you know, somewhat. But it's it's important that Nigerians see the government is working." At, it's important that government is also seen to be communicating mm -hmm. uh, with stakeholders, in, including labor, because labor is also talking about uh, they don't get to speak with government or they don't get to hear as often as they want to from government. So, so these are you know issues that one also needs to, to yeah. talk about. We'll see how it goes, though. Especially but uh, with the president's speech coming up on Sunday. Uh, yes. Okay. Sunday. So I'm yeah. looking forward yeah. to that. I, I, to I that. am it, optimistic. It should address all of these issues <laughs> right. as well. Right. And of course, you know the interesting story that we also saw about you know Dave Omahi, mm -hmm. uh, engineer Dave Omahi, and you know since his inauguration, he's been so uh, uh, vocal. And now that he now has, uh, you know, to contend, so to speak, with um, his um, officials oh, yeah. in his immediate ministry as supervisor, supervising ministry. We're looking at First News. The pictures of the standoff there, you know, say it all. First News uh, talking about alleged high-handedness. He came in earlier, found that a number of um, civil servants within the ministry were not on seat. They were not around. They had arrived late. And then he, he carried out some form of disciplinary measure. And they, in turn, weren't having none of that. They said it was it's due to the hardship on the land that um, they chose to uh, do what they did. Yeah. You can also look at the pictures on the punch. The punch also has a bit of um, some more graphic detail or yeah. pictorial detail. Omahi locks out workers, protesters, cite hardship for lateness. Well, he... he I understand what the protesters are saying, but I also listened to what um, the minister said. And he mentioned that he had had meetings with officials, senior officials in the ministry, and um, they've brought about these kinds of issues about the fact that um, people don't come to work early because of this economic issue. And so he gave directive that, okay, for nine, they should, the workers should resume at 9 a.m. And at 9.30 when he arrived at work, I was looking, asking for some files, realized that a lot of workers were not around. So it, it, also, it also means that while, and we understand the economic reality is quite hard, but it doesn't mean that because we're, while we are working, we work in the private sector, but we know that once we have to come to work, we have to come to work. If resumption is 8 a.m., 
it should be 8 a.m. You should be at office at 8 a.m. no matter what. If there's any excuse, then you can take excuse from your boss and give some reasons. But the workers' points were valid. The governor's points were valid. And I, 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 I like the fact that he had time to talk to his people, to relate with them. And I'm sure they understand where the um, former he's governor's... Yeah, from. where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. Because immediately he was sworn in. He, he took action and went around different gov federal government projects. Even came to Lagos and saw situation of things, and he expressed dissatisfaction at a lot of them, of course, especially with some road projects saying that the roads cannot, cannot um, last more than seven years, which is it's an, it's an aberration in my own words, because when you're constructing roads, it's supposed to be far longer than that. Mm -hmm. You should ensure that the roads can stand the test of time, at least within 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. so, all right, uh, let peace reign and let, and reign, let, yeah. let the work continue. We, we hope that um, you know, the ministry gets to move beyond all uh, the happenings of Thursday and work for the greater good of all. Mm -hmm.